I'm joined by Congress member Jared Moskowitz. Congress member, welcome to the show. What's going on, guys? Let me show you this clip right here of your buddy, uh, MAGA Republican James Comer. Here oh, how's he's he doing? He's how's he doing? Well, th how th is th James? He's doing okay. I think he's doing okay here. Play, play he canceled, this he's canceled a lot of our oversight uh, hearings because they're going so well. So I, I just don't get to spend as much time with him as I used well, to. Well, you can watch him here, and this is how you'll have to react to him via Midas Touch videos at this point because he's too afraid to hold committee hearings here. Play, play this clip, Salty. Hunter also in 2018 apparently text revealed a deep distrust of Sherwin and his involvement in family affairs and apparently owed Sherwin money. And Hunter, you know, told his assistant that Sherwin whined that he owed him 30% of his income for 10 years. Uh, then by 2019, the relationship deteriorated further. Uh, did you get any information out of him regarding this? No, you know, he, all of the, the people that we brought in uh, for depositions, they, they have a hard time remembering the bad things. They have a hard time remembering the bad things, Congress member. Oh, by the way, did, did Sean Hannity say deep dish? I, I, I'm pretty sure he said deep dish, which kind of triggered my stomach for lunch. Um, what, do, what do you want? from Comer. He, I mean, he's trying really hard, guys. Okay, he's trying really hard here. He has screwed up this impeachment of Joe Biden so bad. By the way, there's no evidence to impeach Joe Biden, but he has screwed up these hearings so bad that the Republicans were like, screw it. Let's just turn to Mayorkas. We got to we got to break a 150 year old rule here and impeach a cabinet secretary with no evidence. But if we don't impeach somebody, uh, our, our, you know, Trump and our base are going to go crazy on us. But, you know, Com Comer is just a complete Failure, you know, someone on his team should tell him he's, he should st he should stop doing interviews. He should just lay low for a little bit and, you know, try to try to rebuild his image. At this point, they're not really to your point. They're not holding any hearings anymore. They're they mentioned the impeachment inquiry, but don't do anything about it. What, what do you make of that? Well, because it's gone so well for them, Ben. I mean, they're just crushing it, right? Every hearing they hold is just wonderful between not having any evidence, not knowing what they what the crime uh, of impeachment uh, Biden committed. They can't name it. Right. Uh, their own witnesses saying there's no evidence to impeach the president. Hunter trolling them. Uh, I, I mean, it just at, at every turn they have failed at their hearings. They failed to convince the American people. They have spent more time uh, on impeachment, by the way, than they have trying to secure the border, uh, which they're now walking away from. And so, you know, this, the 118th Congress is the least productive Congress in 30 years. And I think it the epitome of that is watching these oversight hearings. Probably calling it the least productive is, is maybe generous. I mean, it is affirmatively destructive, whether they're looking at our national security interests aboard, abroad or they're looking at the border they're actually making efforts because Donald Trump is saying that he wants to whine about these issues during the campaign. Well, Donald's in complete control. Donald is in complete control at this moment in time. If, if anyone wants to know, are we going back to the days of a, a one man party? We are here, right? We're here 10 months before the election, right? Donald calls up Speaker Johnson and says, say no to that. And he says, yes, yes, sir. No. No, I'm, I, and he's Donald Trump's no boy, uh, right? You know, there's that great scene in uh, in the Eddie Murphy movie, Distinguished Gentleman, uh, when they say, you're Dick Dodge's yes guy. And he says, no, I'm not. When Dick Dodge says no, I say no. Okay, that's Mike Johnson. He's just whatever Donald Trump says, he, he's like a Yago, right, uh, on, on, on his shoulder. Um, and so in the Senate, you know, poor Mitch McConnell. You know, Mitch McConnell trying to do something on the border, which I think we need to be doing. I'm for doing something on the border. I've been saying that for months. Uh, I think you know we've been slow to try to get to the table to try to make this happen. But poor Mitch McConnell finally gets the most conservative border bill in a generation. <clears throat> and his members come out against it because Trump has spoiled the well. I mean, if you look at the online propaganda on that bill uh, on X and other places, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing the army of trolls uh, going after that bill, and Mitch McConnell's not doesn't have control of his own members. Trump does. I mean, I mean that that border bill, the bipartisan border deal with the lead negotiator being 
Republican Oklahoma Senator James Lankford, who Donald Trump endorsed in 2022 as being tough on the border, basically gives Republicans their wish list of everything that they've been asking for and when given it because Donald Trump gave the phone call to MAGA Mike Johnson and said, I want to run my campaign on whining about the border. All yeah, of the Republicans are killing the bill. This, right? I love this. It's a crisis. We have to solve it right now. I mean, this this is literally what happened. <clears throat> Let me give you the, the nine, 30, 60 seconds on this. So they say, well, we're not going to help Ukraine anymore because we're not going to secure Ukraine's border if we can't secure our border. Okay, great. We'll work on a work on a deal. So three months go by as they're working on this deal. Uh, and all of a sudden, they come up with the most conservative border bill in a generation. And all of a sudden, Republicans are like, oh, oh holy shit. They, they, they actually listened to us. They, they actually did what we said. Well, uh, we, we can't. We can't pass this because if we pass this, we won't be able to use it as an election issue. I mean, we need we need more fentanyl and more people crossing the border and supposed terrorists. You know, we need all that. I mean, Donald Trump right now, to be clear, is hoping deep down something bad happens at the border or someone got through on the border. That's a bad guy and they commit something so that he can use it in the next election. That is where we are. If you don't accept that is what Donald Trump wants and is trying to accomplish, then you are not paying attention. Uh, and so, look, this thing is dead. Uh, I think probably almost everything else might be dead uh, th this session because, you know, you already see Jim Jordan saying, well, let the American people decide, right? We're back to the let's not fill the Supreme Court seat. Let's let the American people decide mentality. Uh, and, and Congress continues to devolve in slow motion uh, before our eyes. Uh, so in addition to killing a bipartisan border deal, though, you have your Republican colleagues, though, who are seemingly pushing forward with this impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas, uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security, though I've been seeing a list of some Republicans, especially some in California, also coming out against the impeachment. So we'll see where that nets out. But there, the Republicans well, right, are There's still a couple of people who read the Constitution, apparently, just two or three of them. And we're like, so what was the, where, what, where's the high crime and misdemeanor? Where is the threshold that meets impeachment? I mean, look, we continue to break this place every single day in the 118th Congress. If they impeach my orcas, I can guarantee you no one good is going to want to become a secretary because this idea that you can get impeached when they don't like what you're doing, no one's going to go through that. No one's going to have their reputation ruined. OK, and then look, when we get into a, another Congress and with, with the president of another party, they'll impeach two or three secretaries. And, and so this is this is just the continuing unwinding and breaking of this place because Donald Trump demands it. He demands it happen. He demands somebody be impeached. Uh, but because Comer messed up the, the Biden impeachment so bad, they're, they're going after they're going after Mayorkas. But Republicans have the brilliant idea to make Marjorie Taylor Greene one of the impeachment managers. Yeah, we, listen, America is demanding more of Marjorie Taylor Greene. I hear it all the time. She's fabulous. Okay, just totally wonderful, charming, right? Just a real people person. Feel like you can connect with her on a real human level, right? Very level-headed, doesn't seem angry or bitter, sticks to the facts uh, and the truth. Uh, the darling, quite frankly, of the middle of the country. Uh, and so Republicans were like, let's feature her uh, on national television. In fact, let's put her in the Senate uh, and let her make the case on why we should impeach a secretary, which hasn't happened in 150 years. I think it's an excellent choice, really, by by Speaker Johnson showing that he he really is committed uh, to continuing to destroy uh, the 118th Congress. Congressman, I, I, when I refer to kind of MAGA or MAGA Republicans, I often say MAGA equals fascism or wannabe fascism plus idiocracy. And the idiocracy, fortunately, has outweighed the ability to implement the fascist designs. Because sometimes when I watch this stuff, I'm like, this stuff is just really, it's really weird. Like, like take a look, like Donald Trump, who we've been talking about as the one giving the orders 
to your Republican colleagues in the House of Representatives. I mean, he's spending the weekend, he's he's posting photos of himself like this next to Elvis. I mean, I, I think we have this photo saying for so many years, people have been saying that Elvis and I like look alike. And then, you know, he gives these speeches at his events where he's just making noises at this point. Like he's like, well, here's the military and here's, it goes ding, ding, a ding, a, a swoosh here. Like, like play, play this, play this clip. Uh, these are not muscle guys here. They're muscle guys up here, right? And they calmly walk to a seat. Ding, 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 ding. They've only got 17 seconds to figure this whole thing out, right? Boom. Okay. Missile launch. Pshin, boom. And I got one more for you, Congressman. Stable, too, you know, stable the- genius, largest brain. I got one more for you, too, where, you know, at these events, he, like, reenacts this scene where like a, a woman is is weightlifting and and then she goes like uh, uh, but watch play this clip and they're proud they're clapping they're going crazy i can't do it mama I can't. Boom. Uh, but don't you go look at your colleagues sometimes and you're like what in the world is going on this is just some weird crap what 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 do you what do you want but you know, and Democrats, I don't think, have recognized for a while now because we think people are paying attention to the policy. We think people, you know, have all this time to really know what's going on and the facts. And we say, no, no, the American people know. They don't know. They don't know. And Donald Trump is pure entertainment and they're glued to it and they get a little snippet uh, of it and and it, it's enjoyable. Like Donald Trump is selling blenders and do- Democrats are trying to sell pie charts, right, and graphs. You know, it just... You know, we're showing them all the metrics that the economy is great. And Donald Trump just says, you need an ID to buy a loaf of bread. And people are like, holy shit, you need an ID to buy a loaf of bread? It's just like 35% of Republicans now think him and Elvis looks alike just because he shows them shows them the photo. Uh, you know, it just it, it, we live in very strange and weird times. But if Democrats don't take notice of what's happening and recognize that Trump could win the election unless we vote, right? We, it's all fun and games. We laugh at it. Uh, but Trump's people are coming. They're coming to vote. Um, I mean, anyone who wants Trump to be president will be at the ballot box. But there might be Democrats who want Joe Biden to win, who stay home for a, a reason or another. They're not engaged. They, you know, that you know, they're mad at him over a specific policy, or the, you know, they, 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 they think both these guys are too old. But if Democrats don't vote, that is what we're going to have uh, for the for the next four years. By the way, every time he made that dink dink noise, I just kept thinking about that scene in Spaceballs uh, where they meet those guys in the desert and they're like dink 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 dink, and they all work for yogurt. Remember yogurt? <laughs> I, w- I want to I want to leave you with this. Given Sorry, I had that to give Spaceballs, I had to give Spaceballs a Mel Spaceballs so references are always welcome on the Midas Touch yeah, Network. Yeah. So for these next nine months, as MAGA Republicans seemingly in the House of Representatives want to do nothing, like what is it that you can do though? I mean, they're, they're probably not going to hold committee hearings. They're going to obstruct. Like, what can Congressman Moskowitz do, and what can you and your colleagues do yeah. over the next nine months to bring attention? Too important. We, we have to communicate. We, we have to communicate because look, that's what Donald Trump is doing. Donald Trump is communicating. He is flooding the zone of information, most of it garbage, but he's still flooding the zone with information. We have to communicate. I mean, Trump and the Republicans are literally showing to the American people. And by the way, if you look at some of the polling, right, actually winning on issues. That you don't have to accomplish anything. You don't have to pass policies. You just have to, you have to message, right? If you look at NBC News just had a, a, a poll on a lot of issues that were concerning. Like Donald Trump is only losing to Joe Biden on democracy by two points, right? He's up on crime and securing the border by 20, um, you know, on, in, in each of those, okay? You know, on, on mental capacity, he's beating the, pre- he's beating Joe Biden. Joe, Donald Trump's beating Joe Biden by uh, double digits. We we have to message because that's all they're doing. All they're doing is messaging. Um, and because obviously, you know, people are busy in their everyday lives. They don't pay attention to the stuff that like you and I, Ben, this is what we do for a living. They have kids, they have jobs, they have two jobs. Um, you know, they have the stresses of everyday life. They're, they're not glued to this stuff like we are. And so if the Democrats don't get their messaging game together, uh, we can't just be like, the economy is great. The American people know it. They don't know it. They don't know. They don't they don't know. You got to do the compare and contrast. We got to remind people, 
you know, Donald Trump's the, the, the guy who locked, locked you in your home, right? Donald Trump was the guy who was in charge when there, you, you couldn't even, you know, buy uh, Clorox, you know, at, uh, you know, at, or gloves or masks because, you know, the world ran out of that. We, he didn't have a plan. You know, we got to remind people that, you know, the, the economy and inflation went to hell under Donald Trump uh, during COVID. Like, we got to remind people the failures of those four years, uh, and to give him the keys again. Um, and we got to start now. We got to do it now. He's the nominee. Uh, and so if, if the Democrats don't get their messaging machine together in order to drive that vote out, then then we're in trouble. And Joe Biden's message has got to be the thing he's always said, which is don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. You, you might disagree with me on something I've done in the last four years, but if you don't vote, Donald Trump is coming. He's coming back. He's coming back. And I want to remind everybody that, and I love this about your congressional office, taking the message to the people. Y'all created a YouTube channel. So if everybody wants to subscribe to Congress member Moskowitz's YouTube channel, you can go and check that out. I just think, you know, all members of Congress should have that YouTube channel, get that message out. And I like that your office is taking the initiative and, and, and you're doing a lot of great videos there. So subscribe to Congress member Moskowitz's channel as well. Thanks as always for uh, joining us and uh, we hope to have you back soon. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. All right. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hit subscribe. Help us get to 3 million subscribers. Have a good one. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.